Hello again, friends. Welcome to Digging Disciples. I am John Grigsby, your host. And today we're still talking about Christmas. We're, we're actually, we're between Christmas and New Year's, the week between Christmas and New Year's. And of course, Christmas is over the celebration that we have, but we're talking still about the birth of Jesus. And this week, we're going to be talking about the wise men, the wise men. And what did they play? What role did they play in the birth of Jesus? So we've been talking about the birth of Jesus through the book of Luke, but Luke did not record this story for some reason, uh, but, but Matthew did. So we're going to turn to uh, Matthew chapter two, uh, you know, both Matthew and Luke and all the disciples weren't there for the birth, right? They, they didn't come on to Jesus, come into Jesus' life 30 some odd years later. So these are the accounts that were told to them probably by Mary and Joseph and some others that were there at that time. But nonetheless, here in Matthew chapter two, we read in starting in verse one. So after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived unexpectedly in Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. So he assembled all the chief priests the scribes of the people, and asked them where the Messiah would be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, because out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people, Israel. When Herod secretly summoned the wise men and asked the exact time the star appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. That's a wink wink right there. After hearing the king, they went on their way. And there it was, the star they had seen in the east. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. So when we see the nativity scenes, we see these three wise men there at the birth of Jesus. And was there really three men there? Was there really three wise men there? And were they there when Jesus was born? Well, the first question is, we don't know. The second one is, no. They were not there when Jesus was born, but they were there sometime after. And how many were they? Well, we don't know. But because of the three gifts that they offered, tradition has it that there was three men. Well, let's just dig into that and see. So first of all, when we read this, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, King Herod, um, in, the, in the days of King Herod, wise men from the east arrived. Now, the translation for wise men in the Greek there is magus, magoi, or as we say, magi. The magi, and this is name given to Babylonians and Persians, people from the Orient, okay, who were either teachers, wise men, uh, priests, physicians, astrologers, astrologers, easy for you to say, right? Astrologers or interpreters of dreams. And they were most likely a set of exiled Jews. So they would have come from the Jews. They would know some of the Jewish traditions and the Jewish scripture, but then they also mixed in some of their thinkings from the Orient. And, but still, they were someone that knew about Jesus and knew about the Bible, but were looking to it 
looking to him from a different standpoint. They was looking to him from the stars, right? And so when they saw this star, they took off towards Jerusalem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but they went to Jerusalem, didn't they? Now, how, when did they get there? Uh, I looked it up uh, on maps, and it's about, uh, according to Google, if you were to walk from, I picked a point in uh, east of Pakistan, somewhere close to the Chinese border, somewhere in the Orient, let's say, and you were to walk from there to Jerusalem, according to Google, it would take you somewhere in the neighborhood of 31 days. Well, Google doesn't consider bathroom breaks, uh, eating, uh, or sleeping. So if you were to take off from somewhere in the Orient to Jerusalem, we're going to guess it's going to take us somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 60 days to get there, to travel. Now, I don't think that three men taking off in the middle of the desert was a wise thing either. And since they were magi, from where they originated, they probably had people with them to tend to them. Cooks, people to care for them. Who knows what kind of people went with them on their journey? How many were they? We don't know. But there were some wise men, plural, so there were at least two. Could have been many more. We don't know, right? But what we do know is that they came from the Orient. They were followed by this star. Now the star, when you think about the star, you think, oh, they got that star right over top of the, of the nativity scenes. That's what we see all the time. What I know about astrology, and is not much, let me tell you, is that stars, if I look at it at night, at let's say nine o'clock at night, and I see the little dipper, the little dipper will be over here at five o'clock in the morning, right? Stars move. Actually, the earth moves. Stars pretty much pretty well stay still as far as we can tell. So I don't think that they actually got out at night and said, okay, let's take off after that star. Because if they did, they would have wandered off and got off somehow. But I think it was a sign for them to go to Jerusalem, to what they considered to be the home of Israel, which was Jerusalem, and then ask for the baby. Where is this baby that they come to worship? Because if they were a, a set of Jews, then they too would have been overjoyed knowing that the Jewish king was here, right? So they were coming with excitement as well. And when they get there, King Herod is disturbed, right? He was, it says in verse three, he was deeply disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. So I think with when the wise people, let's say, pulled into town there in Jerusalem, they were expecting a different scene. They were expecting all the Jews, at least, to be a buzz about this new king that's been born. Their new king had arrived. Why would everyone not be excited? Why was Jerusalem just not a buzz over this new king that had been born? But when they told Herod, Herod was disturbed as well as all Jerusalem. Well, why were they disturbed? Of course, Herod was disturbed because he was thinking this new king is going to upset political and or social issues in Jerusalem. He did not want that. That is not, he was there to keep the peace, keep those Jews settled down, keep them somewhat pacified. So they'll just be good citizens of Rome, right? For Rome. That's what they wanted. They wanted to rule over them, but they want to keep them peace. So they pacify them to a degree, but not, not a whole lot. So everyone was concerned. So Herod didn't know, as the political leader, he didn't know. He went over here to the religious leaders and said, hey, where is this uh, baby that's been born? And of course, what did they tell him? They gave him an answer from scripture and said, oh, oh he's going to be born in Bethlehem. That's where he is going to be born because that's what the scriptures say. That's what they were. That's what they knew. That's what they accounted to Herod. Right. So. All right, Herod tells the wise men, he's actually over in Bethlehem, but when you get there, report back to me where he's at so I can come worship him. That's a big wink, right? He is not going to worship him. He wants to kill him because he knows that he can bring trouble to Jerusalem. Herod is afraid. 
So wise men gather this up. They take Boogie off to uh, Bethlehem and they find Jesus. And here again, it says that they, they saw the star. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. So I am not 100% sure that it was actually a physical star right over where Jesus was living at the time, or if it was a star, a constellation that had just came together that was brighter than any other stars that they had known at that time to signify that Jesus was born. I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll ask Jesus. I don't know. If you know somewhere different, I'd love to hear from you on that. But as far as I know, we don't know if it's actually a star right over top of where Jesus was at or just the star that signified that Jesus was born. Nonetheless, they went in, they went in, they opened the door, or they said they went in, and they found Jesus, or said the child with Mary, his mother. So obviously it's probably during the day. And Joseph wasn't there. Where was Joseph? Well, he's probably out working, right? Because this was three, six months, maybe a year even after Jesus was born. So he had to go and make money to feed this child, right? But they entered, and the uh, I like how the scripture mentioned Jesus first, or the child first, then Mary. They, the scripture is always an order of importance. It listed the child first, then Mary. And when they came in, it says they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, the three gifts that they gave him, were they significant? Or was that just what they had to bring? We don't know. Uh, but we do know that the importance of gold. Gold uh, signifies royalty, right? And it's also currency, right? But it was a royalty. Gold represented royalty. Incense speaks of divinity, something that you smell, smelling um, scents uh, that signified divinity. And myrrh was a spice that they used to embalm people after they died. So were those three gifts significant? Well, to us, they are. Were they, when the wise men presented them, what did they know? You certainly would be led to believe that they understood the importance of Jesus and who he was and who he would be. So after reading this, uh, I, I realized that there's three sets of people here in this story. And I want you to evaluate yourself and see where amongst those three do you lie? So first of all, there was Herod, right? Herod, uh, he was, uh, had a very openly distaste and hostility towards Jesus, right? He, he secretly told them he want, or he told the wise men he wanted to go worship them, but he really didn't. He wanted to kill them because we'll find out later that he killed all the males in that area under the age of two, just to be sure he didn't miss this baby that they call Jesus. He hated Jesus and he didn't want any part to do with him would do anything he can to snuff him out as a matter of fact the second group of people is the the chief priests or the scribes that they talked about right and they were the religious people of the time but what were they they were actually very indifferent towards jesus they, didn't, they weren't worshiping they weren't excited because of this new baby and matter of fact if you want to know about it uh, here's what the scriptures say here's what what the, the scripture says will happen, but we're sticking to our traditions, right? They were sticking to their traditions and the knowledge that they knew from before. They certainly weren't open to Jesus coming, especially as a baby in a manger. Not what they were expecting, right? So they were just sort of indifferent about Jesus. Yeah, here's what the scripture says. Go find him if you want to. They certainly didn't go with him, did they? The scribes and, and uh, uh, the religious leaders didn't take off and go with the wise men, or at least the Bible doesn't say so, does it? So eh, it was no big deal to them. We'll, we'll, we'll stay with what, stick with what we know. And the last group of people, of course, were these wise men. They sought out Jesus. 
And the Bible says they unexpectedly showed up and worshiped him. It wasn't planned. They didn't tell anybody they were coming. They found out about Jesus and they wanted to go get closer to him. They wanted to be part of it. They wanted to bow down and worship him in person, right? This baby that they knew was the deity was God, God in person. And they gave up several things. They gave up their time, you know, probably a year or longer journey of what they took to get there and back money, uh, physical, a social, you know, think about this. They, they left from that country where they came from. You know, why, why are you all going to Israel? Why are you going to this? You know, what kind of issues did it cause them back home that they were going over here to worship this Jewish King? Who knows? But they did give of their sales, their time, their money, and their physical abilities and their gifts to go worship Jesus. So of those three sets of people, Herod, the scribes, the religious leaders, and then the wise men, which do you fall? Do you want to stop at Jesus? If you're listening to this video by now, I'd say you don't fall on that one, right? <laughs> you're not somebody who wants to get rid of Jesus. You're <laughs> you probably uh, appreciate Jesus in some way, but do we fall into the scribes or into the wise men? Is he just indifferent? That's what people do. Yeah, he's a good guy, got some good morals, but that's eh, just not for me. Or can we be more like the wise men and give of our time and our money, our resources, our physical, our social status to follow and really have a relationship with Jesus? Not just come and give him our gifts, but now we know we can have a relationship with Jesus. And, oh, that's a game changer. It's a game changer, isn't it, for us? Knowing what we know happened in the future, what we can do today. So I hope you had a good Christmas. I hope your Christmas was, was joyful and peaceful, and you got to celebrate with family and friends. Looking forward to the new year. There's a lot to talk about in the next few weeks uh, having to do with the new year. But for now, I want to wish you uh, blessings as you navigate the seasons of life. Thanks.